ideology the president Bolamed Tinibu administration is looking to renew the hopes of Nigerians. Now joining us on the show this morning to also broaden the scope of conversation is Ambassador Musa Mohammed Sokin. Welcome to the show. Good morning to you. Good morning and thank you for having me. Now Ambassador Musa is the APC national president on uh, good governance and uh, for the integrated actions towards diversifying the economy, particularly with focus on agriculture. Now, we're going to look at some of the developments in line with President Bola Metinibu's Accelerated Stabilization and Advancement Plan. Mm -hmm. Let's begin with uh, one of the more key symbolic things that the president did, which is the inauguration of the Presidential Economic Coordinating Council. How pivotal is this in regards to stabilizing Nigeria's economy? Let me start by wholeheartedly congratulate Mr. President on his re-election as the chairman of ECOWAS. Uh, that depicts his acumen and uh, intelligence and a practical approach to African uh, you know, integration and cooperation. Congratulations, Mr. President. And uh, how we can say that the economic situation of the country is so you know, uh, in the manner to which it attracts a tactical approach in order to leverage the suffering of the masses of this uh, uh, country. It is in that regard that Mr. President deemed it fit to come out with an accelerated stabilization and uh, advancement plan in order to support some of the uh, key and major areas of the economy of the country to leverage the suffering of the uh, masses of this country in order to bring the uh, country back on stage in terms of uh, the economic growth and economic development. Now we'll look at some of these key areas and we're hoping that our viewers at home would also have the benefits of the infographics. But President Bola Metinibu has told us that in the next six months, Nigerians can expect 2 trillion naira injected into the economy. Now, and highlighting one of the key areas and sectors where a bulk of this money is to go in is 500 billion naira targeting the energy and power sectors. It's coming at a time when people have also complained about the hike in electricity tariff. Organized labor is calling for an outright reversal of this tariff. But do you, are you sure that this injection would help cure the, I would use the word cure, cure the energy sector of a lot of the issues that have bedeviled it before now. 500 billion naira is so substantial that if injected into the economy, particularly in the area of uh, agriculture, is going to promote the productivity capacity of the agricultural sector, which is definitely going to put food on the table of uh, the masses of the country. So. Uh, that 500,000 uh, billion naira in six months, or let me put it in the total, the total amount of uh, two trillion to be injected into the economy in order to stabilize uh, the economy is something that is well heartedly welcome and uh, is going to go a long way to promote businesses, improve the standard of living of the masses of the country as well as promote other social and welfare of the citizens of the country now some people uh, the, the, uh, the uh, ASU academic staff union have been feeling somewhat um, down about this and their reason is because um, they're saying that education was not part of the uh, front burner issues that this was going to take care of uh, do you buy their, 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 their lamentation? You see, when they talk about uh, social welfare, the social welfare includes all other sectors that is going to improve the standard of living of the masses. And that goes a long way to also incorporate educational system. Because by welfare, it touches virtually all the sectors that have to do with the welfare of the people. So if in if education is not mentioned, but I think welfare also have to do with the area of education, health, and uh, all other sectors that is very viable 
for uh, you know supporting uh, the welfareism of uh, the people of the country. So all these tactical areas is systematically selected to cover virtually all sections of the economy. So it's not limited to, you know, uh, when they talk about uh, social, it's a multifaceted discipline or area that encompasses virtually all areas of uh, uh, discipline and uh, uh, social welfare is as well. Well, we'll look at the infographic as well, and we'll look at it from the angle of 500 billion naira being injected into the agricultural sector, much like Ambassador Musa has hopped on. There's a similar amount injected into the energy sector as well. Uh, many continue to complain about our generation capacity, saying we need to upscale our four megawatts transmission so that states across Nigeria can also benefit from this. But uh, one of the aspects of this development is the fact that there's also the need to center on new rural-based MSMEs to be developed. Now, they're saying that a bulk of the SMEs that are benefiting from some of the rollouts of funds from President Bola Metinibu's Renewed Hope agenda have been based in the urban centers. Now, we're told that 11,100 new rural-based SMEs are also to be developed. Many are complaining about security challenges. While it is applaudable, that the rural centers will be targeted, many fear that some of these rural centers are already plagued with insecurity. Uh, should we be talking state police now or community watch? How do we canvas for the benefits of rural communities in a time as sensitive as this? Virtually, the issue of community-based policing is something that is very systemic and uh, strategic for the security of uh, uh, the rural areas as well as the urban area as such. So key into the, the security challenges, uh, incorporating other devices, like engaging the youth of a community who are very vast in the knowledge of uh, the environment and uh, all the nooks and crannies of their city is a plus that will go a long way to give the befitting security outfit that is going to galvanize to give what is needed in order to tackle the security challenges we, that endeavor some of the communities. Now, you also talked about welfare as well at this point. Let's look at that infographics together as we highlight some of the other key areas that the two trillion naira is to be injected in, in terms of President Bola Metinibu's advancement and stabilization plan. Now, away from the 11,100 new rural based MSMEs to be developed, we hear that there is 1 million vulnerable people to be covered in the health insurance scheme. There's also a projection of 2 million barrels per day of oil from the current figures. There's also supposed to be 25,000 additional housing units to be delivered. There's supposed to be 20,000 healthcare workers to provide services to between 10 to 12 million patients in areas where they are most urgently needed. And in terms of its job creation drive, is 4.7 million direct and indirect jobs expected to be created. Now, and if you look above this, we've talked about the 500 billion for energy and power sector, 500 billion for agri and food security. There's now 350 billion Naira for health and social welfare. But the bulk, many would say the bigger portion of this is the 650 billion Naira for general business support. Now, it's also tied to this 4.7 million direct and indirect jobs supposed to be created. Mm -hmm. You have always been an advocate of agriculture to lead the way. Should this 4.7 million jobs center mostly in the agro-aligned industries? Yes, of course. Centering on the agro-based industry is going to give a larger incorporation of uh, people from both the rural areas and uh, uh, the, 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 the urban setting. Because uh, the 600 billion naira that is a mark for uh, the job business support, well, it is said general, uh, it means encompassing all other sectors of uh, business, uh, you know, activities, whether in the in the in the areas of uh, uh, you know agriculture, in the area of uh, other sectors that is uh, is meant to generate substantial revenue to support individuals, group, and uh, companies as well. 
in order to mitigate, uh, you know, the uh, hardship Nigeria is, uh, you know, is facing, which is generally is globally. So that is going to surmount all forces and is going to give the best to the country in terms of uh, uh, developing the economic strengths of individuals, groups and companies. Now, still talking about agriculture, um, 135 metric tons of staple crops grown by smallholder farmers uh, is meant to be to come from the that is away from the current 127 metric tons that is, that the country is facing at the moment. Um, we've also seen drives towards um, provision of fertilizer and the rest. But one thing that um, farmers have uh, always have done is the uh, challenge of security. Um, beyond the numbers, beyond the future goals. What can we begin to do? How are there other ways whilst we face the security challenges and we fight to finish? Are there other ways to help us get to this promised land, you know, so that at the end of the day we're not wasting this monies? The dynamism of uh, the accelerated stabilization advancement plan, it is it's a kind of multifaceted, you know, a plan that will give coverage to all the sectors of the economies. And by that doing, it's also, it also means tackling insecurity directly or indirectly, because that is going to provide, uh, provide a kind of lot of jobs, opportunities to the young people. And by the time people are fully incorporated in businesses, they will be strengthened financially, and that will, you know, uh, destabilize any form of uh, insecurity in the country. So this accelerated st uh, stabilization advancement plan is wholeheartedly and uh, you know uh, systematically uh, structured to capture all area, including uh, the security challenges. Now let's talk about the contribution of the youths. The other day I saw a publication credited to some of the good jobs that the APC IGG is doing across the six geopolitical zones. It's not enough to have a policy of government on ground and not know if the youths are ready to buy into it. Now, across the six geopolitical zones under the APC, APC initiative for good governance, how are the youths looking to greet these opportunities on the table? Definitely already we have, we have our members caught across the 774 local government and the, uh, the 36 state. And uh, uh, we are so structured and well positioned to contribute immensely to the economics of uh, this country. So uh, it is our belief that having our data on ground ready to be incorporated into this system is going to go a long way to promote good governance as well as strengthen the economies of the country, which is going to reduce lot of, uh, uh, you know, unemployment and I also tackle some of the security challenges we are having in the country. Now, uh, m most of what the North is known for is its agricultural drive and I'll continue to reiterate it. Now, whilst you're talking about the data needed to ensure that uh, most of the benefits trickle down to Nigerians, is the concern that we need a new social register. In the coming days, we'll be celebrating the World Population Day. Many are calling on the current administration owing to the fact that the, his predecessor, former President Muhammad Ubuari, had to shift the census owing to the proximity to the elections. And up until now, we, we haven't seen any move to conduct the next census that would inform Nigeria on the available data to be catered for through this stabilization and advancement plan. How important is it for the current administration to plan towards in next national exercise incorporating several organizations into a system that is well structured give an information reliable information that is going to galvanize to give an accurate figure of the tighted audience in relation to what is put in place to be achieved by the larger populace so um, having that in mind that uh, the data that is already on ground from several organizations and uh, you know uh, structures 
is a very good one and uh, is going to incorporate into the system to give you know an accurate information regarding the youth and other populations of the people in the country now the minister also talked about the challenge of housing in nigeria the president's plan is to provide twenty-five thousand additional housing units but it's on the concern that the average purchasing power of a nigerian household does not empower them enough to be able to get a, get house, a house even with deductions or, or, buy, a land. or buy a land as well uh, in in enabling nigerians through this enumeration exercise can we also look at plans to cater for these demographics of persons that struggle with being able to afford portable housing in Nigeria? Going by the uh, systemic application of uh, the strategy, already it is on ground that um, this strategy is not for a, a kind of accumulated or a one-time deal to pay off for a, 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 a portion of a land or a house. But it's a, it's a strategic plan that is targeting uh, people to have their own, you know, houses, not only land, but to also have their own houses. And this is, 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 is targeting a, a long-time approach and is segmented so that people should be able to pay it on a lighter level, not only on at the same time, but to pay it in the kind of uh, uh, a, a kind of uh, piecemeal approach. A piecemeal approach mm. to that matter. So this plan is very well systemic, and is going to give the Nigerian masses all that is needed for them to secure. Uh, houses and you know houses are some of the major is among the major basic need of man so having a house to stay is also an approach to tackling insecurity in the country so by not even mentioning education security and other sectors this system incorporates all other sectors of the economy and it's going to give a very fruitful result. It's a tactical approach that is, uh, you know, designed by expert, economic expert. Mr. President bring in expert and uh, people who have uh, experience in uh, to approach that economic situation. And uh, as I earlier said, it encompasses all areas of discipline and every sector of the economy. So it's a world. Uh, you know, strategic plan that is give, that is going to give the country what is needed to take it to the greater heights. Now let's look at um, the 20,000 health workers that has been asked to provide services for uh, between 10 to 12 million patients in area where they are most urgently needed. In Nigeria, the situation we are right now is the fact that we are seeing a mass exodus of medical personnel outside the shores of the country. Meanwhile, we've also heard, you know, um, the president also asking that more medical students be um, enrolled into the universities. But meeting this target is what is in, in, in line. And of course, talking about sustainability, uh, what are your thoughts as to how we can sustain, you know, these numbers to meet our target with the underlying challenges we're facing with our health workers in the country? Well, Mr. Fre President, I've already taken a step. And what is now needed at most is for our youth or other medical personnel that are in the other countries to see the need to have a kind of nationalistic zeal, to have the country at heart, and come back to render such services in the area of health to provide essential health uh, you know, services to the country. And uh, a lot of time, is the Mr. President, uh, you know, uh, skills and uh, the area to which he make it clear that the numbers of uh, the medical students to be uh, to be enrolled should be heightened up so that to make up the target. So that is already a major step taken 
in order to you know equip that uh, particular section with the, uh, the the power so needed to be able to achieve the services in the area of health to the people. Now, in the area of health is also a call from the federal government under President Bola Metinibu to the World Bank. It is also asking for a concession and a cancellation of $41.62 million COVID-19 loan. It's coming at a time when a lot of persons are looking at our national debt profile having crossed 95 trillion naira as a time when consensus like this should be heeded do you think that the world bank in its magnanimity should listen to this call from the federal government yes of course all this is done in all you know what makes a, 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 an economy a economy of a country to to be strong is the availability of the finance the financial strength of that economy will determine whether it is going to achieve its target or not. So by doing that, is in, in order to consolidate and augment the financial stand of the country so that they should be able to, uh, you know, spread their hands all over in order to meet up with the target. So it's a very, very welcome idea to that regard. Okay, let's um, get to energy and power. I mean, this has been one of the challenges we've been facing in the country. Now, um, some people have said our challenge with the power sector is a structural one. However, we see that uh, from this two trillion naira, 500 billion naira has been a max for energy and power. And one of the things that we should be looking at getting from this is an up game from our four gigawatt, uh, current four gigawatt uh, uh, power production electricity into six gigawatts in six months uh, disbursing those funds into the power sector in your own um, thought do you think is the right thing to end our power crisis or do you do you accept or stand with those that have said uh, our challenge in the power sector is more structural than financial The issue of power is a very fundamental issue that have to be given a very, you know, strong support and finance as well. So the, the Mr. President alignment with the huge amount of money that is earmarked for power and energy is very strategic. That is done in order to be able to solve all challenges that is related to that uh, you know, power sector and energy. Having in mind that uh, the energy and power sector consolidates the business activities of, uh, you know, the, the people. Without power, without energy, there is going to be a kind of serious cops in the wheel of progress of any country. So relying and empowering the power and energy sector is going to augment the financial status and employment opportunity in the country. But uh, the other issue of the structural uh, aspect of it is something that Mr. President has taken a very bold steps to ensure that any negativity that is accrued or is making the, uh, the power and energy sector to fail is going to be tackled and are uh, dealt with decisively. So uh, there are so many other steps that is, uh, has already been on ground and is taken by Mr. President to cope all these challenges. And as, as time unfolds, this is going to, to take a very, uh, you know, uh, affirmative uh, action, uh, which is going to give what we actually needed in that sector to improve services delivery in that area. Now, if you're just joining us, you're watching Morning Express live on ADBN television. It's on a broad topic of conversation this Monday morning that we look to review President Bola Metinibu's accelerated stabilization and advancement plan. With us in the studio this morning is Ambassador Musa Mohammed Sokin, who is the All Progressive Congress a National President for the Initiative for Good Governance, APC IGG. Now, in keeping with the conversation, it is also on the need for us to broaden the scope to 
sub-regional support. While Nigeria is said to be practicing federalism, a lot of focus in terms of policy directions and strategies are hinged on the shoulder of Mr. President. But many continue to underscore the need for sub-regional support from governors to achieve this. Now, in credit to the APC government under President Bola Metinibu, the suspension of the payment of fuel subsidy has informed a higher payment of federal allocation to states. But whilst this is the case, earlier this morning we looked at a report that said that there is a mismatch in revenue and expenditure, making some sub-regional heads, that is governors, unable to even meet up with the wage requirements in their states. Many are concerned that this plan, as beautiful as it is, might not be replicated in some states owing to this disparity. Uh, how would you advocate this morning for states to be able to buy into Mr. President's plan and be able to replicate it at the sub-regional level? Because this is something that uh, all the state governors have to, you know, uh, wake up and explore all their potentials. Nigeria is highly blessed with, uh, you know, abundant natural and mineral resources. So it's now for the government of uh, various states to exploit and exploit their potentials. By so doing, it will augment their financial stand to be able to uh, approach all other sectors that where the, the, the federal allocation is not going to be able to meet up with their target. They should be able to, in their own ways, uh, source for, you know, financing of such areas. That is one aspect of uh, the full subsidy that uh, uh, it has, you know, played a very vital role in, uh, you know, augmenting the financial state, uh, states of various states. Because the people that we are, the, the state that we are collecting, for instance, Two three billion naira will collect more. It, it, it means that the, the the amount is tripling, and they are collecting substantial amount of money. One other area is for the go state governors to have a sense of belonging, and the nationalistic zeal, and the willpower to deliver a render services to their states. They should consider their state first, and service deliverance. We have seen a situation whereby everything that is allocated to state, majority, or let me say the substantial amount of what is allocated to state are not efficiently used. It's being diverted from what is meant to be rendered to the people and uh, is diverted to personal accounts. So that is going to destabilize the development we are, uh, you know, any any at in the state level. State governors will see that these people under their watch are the people that bring them into power by the power in their hands, in their fingertips. The power to vote is what brings them in. Some of the challenges we are facing in this country, to be honest, is as a result of some state governors not being able to meet up with their uh, uh, mandate. The, the mandate. The, the, the yes, civic responsibility is abuse and is very un unethical, the practices of some governors. They hinder the development of their states. And this substantial amount of money that is, 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 is sent to the state as state statutory allocation is meant to mitigate and render essential services to the people of such states in areas of education, infrastructure development, health and other securities and all other sectors that is key to bring development at the tip of people. Now, now, now that leads to the issue of accountability. Nigeria is asking, Nigerians are asking for trust in implementation of this process. Uh, what do you think can be done to uh, spur up the transparency, government's transparency, in making sure that as beautiful as this is, it doesn't end on paper? One major thing that is, you know, what actually set back, but the kind of setback in the development of every country is an inability to look properly and uh, monitor 
and evaluate the activities of the state actors. So monitoring and evaluation should be a major concern of the federal government, as well as state governors also have to delve deep into it to monitor every single penny that is sent to ministries and parastatas in order to ensure that every money meant for everything is actually meet up the target. Equitable distribution of resources is very essential. And as well, they should also look at deep into where these resources are going to. If that is done, uh, believe in me, me and you, there's going to be what we are expecting in this country in terms of uh, good governance. Now, an equitable distribution of these resources, like you have hopped on, would also still fall back at the sub-regional approach. It would now have to bring in the third tier of government, the local governments. Now, in this distribution, part of the FAC allocations are to go to that third tier of government. But some of the governors you said who are culpable of uh, diverting these funds have not allowed for it to be used for its intended purpose. In keeping with good governance, how do we engender such a nationalistic approach to borrow from your vocabulary this morning? <laughs> it's very disheartening. Is very very disheartening. The, that is why you see. Is in fact, I don't even know how to describe it. State governors contrary the issue of autonomy to local government. We know in some years back, local government chairmen were able to execute some projects. I'm from <laughs> I'm from Tarawa State. We have some roads in my own local government that is called EFCC roads. That roads were being constructed on the premises that if it's not being constructed, EFCC will go after such chairman. But because of that, they were able to execute these contracts and make roads, construct roads all over the local governments. But today, local government have no powers. I'm telling you, believing me you, so local government will sign something, but it's not given to them. They will send a very huge amount of money, but that money is not going to be translated and be used appropriately in some projects that is earmarked in order to develop such local governments. It's very disheartening. The state governors should wake up to their responsibilities and do their civil right and responsibility to ensure that development reach the masses. Some of the challenges we are facing in this country is a result of local government is closer to the people. And if local government chairman will not be able to, to have a kind of financial strength to deal with some challenges, how are they going to cope? So I'm calling all the governors, they should know that they will be accountable for their action, not only in this war. I don't see the need for people packing billions of Naira. What, what for? At the end of the day, you even die and leave this money. You will not be able to appropriate, you know. So people should have to have, they should have a sense of belonging. Hmm. They should have the people at heart. They should have the nationalistic aspiration, the willpower, the ethical value should be considered to the, the highest you know, level. They should stop a kind of considering themselves and target the masses that bring them into power. Now, now that leads them um, to the, of course, we cannot talk about these initiatives without talking about the role of our anti-graft agencies, you know, in this, in, in making sure that uh, the corruption that goes on in this is eliminated, if possible. Uh, as it stands, do you think that our anti-graft agencies have the wherewithal, have all it takes to be able to make sure that this project is sustained and that we see, if possible, zero corruption in handling the uh, implementation of um, this uh, program? His Excellency President Bola Ahmed Tinibu is someone who has 
a very high skill when it comes to governance. And by so doing, he was able to bring into cycle a technological approach to issues that relate to uh, corruption. So there is a monitoring devices, monitoring approaches, monitoring attitude that is attached to governance. And uh, we are hoping that this time around, those who want to delve their hands into smuggling the resources that is meant to render services to the masses of their various constituencies, we should know that they are going to end up in the anti graft you know, prisons. So everybody should take it not as a business as usual. If you think you can embezzle government money and go free, I am telling you, as well you, Bola Ahmed Tinubu is not such type of people, uh, person that will allow that go freely. We have already seen immediately he was swung into power, he swung into actions. And uh, the world system have been changed completely. So with Aswaju Bolami, President Bolami, Tinibu, we are hoping and praying that uh, all those who think the state resources is their own personal resources to embezzle and consume at will will actually going to, you know, mix it differently at the point of, uh, you know, embezzlement. Well, this morning we also heard earlier in a report that the ICPC has also been able to trace some COVID-19 funds in MDA's accounts that are still unused and over 100 million Naira in personal accounts. Now, I'm bringing the total to 10 billion Naira still with certain ministries, departments and agencies of governments as we underscore the need for the anti-graph agencies to be in, on their oars in the fight against corruption in implementing President Bola Metinibu's 2 trillion naira injection in the next six months to stabilize and accelerate economic growth in Nigeria. We'll go on a short break and when we, record, when we return, we'll re-emphasize some of the highlight features in terms of the amounts of monies enumerated for certain sectors of the economy in the bold initiative. Stay with us. On to our concluding segment on this broad discussion of President Bola Metinibu's accelerated stabilization and advancement plan. Well, still with us in the studio is Ambassador Musa Mohammed Sokan. Uh, as we look to summarize this discussion, it is also on initiatives of the government, much is tied to revenue generation. Mm -hmm. The FIRS has been given a tax of supporting the student's loan directly. We hear that 10% uh, of the annually generated revenue would go into the financing of the student's loan but there have been concerns that uh, the FIRS as an institution of government seems to be overburdened by the responsibilities at hand. Do you agree to this and should you agree is there a need to call for some sort of decentralization of the activities with probably the institution of a director general? Yes of course that is going to be a very good plan where regional uh, you know set up of the organization uh, should be expanded to regional level. That is to have in each of the region, there should be a control, a total control of the revenue generation in that region. And uh, it should be aided by, by a director general who will oversee uh, these uh, you know, agencies in, in such section. That is going to give a total coverage that will go a long way to uh, generate substantial revenue for the government of the day. And you know, ge revenue generation has been the strength of any economy all over the world. So that is a very good idea. If that will be done, it will be a step forward to also stabilize the economic situation of the country. Now, still in line with revenue generation, there is a call for uh, productivity you know, by workers in all the cadres or that will be involved in this plan. Uh, for you, what do you think is the best way to uh, check and to, to be sure that productivity is attained, you know, 
at every level of this plan? Monitoring and evaluation is very, very essential at this level. Every worker should be monitored to know the input, and that should also attract remuneration. If that is encouraged, uh, we are going to have the best, and uh, there will be a lot of uh, productivity uh, capacity will be increased in the area of uh, rendering the services that one is uh, engaged to render to the government or the state. Well, we must thank you for your time on the program this morning, and we're hoping that the good work you're engendering uh, does also attract some notice from Mr. President in line with the APC Initiative for Good Governance. We must thank you for thank your time you so on the program. Thank you very much for coming. You're welcome, and thank you for having me once again.